target locked. Fire. to the death of their native soil, aiding each other like good comrades to the utmost of their strength. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And if, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or a large part of it was subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond the seas, calm and guarded by the British fleet, carry on the struggle until in God's good time. The new world, with all its power and might, steps forth to the rescue and the liberation of the new world. Unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. So, Andrew, long time no see. I think it was almost a year ago. Yeah, pretty much. I remember coming down to see you in Brighton yeah. when things were different. And um, yeah, I can't believe where the time's gone. It's. Uh, I tell you what I can't believe. I can't believe what a beautiful environment you've got yourself here. I mean, guys, honestly, it is absolutely first class. How did you come about this place? Well, uh, I live locally in the village and, and this old boathouse has always been somewhere that has, uh, has always been a dream to have as a studio. Yeah. And uh, it became available around 10 years ago. And it, it, I had this opportunity with the person that owned it to take it over. And um, it just was too good an opportunity. And it, at that time, we didn't really know about the fact that it was steeped in automotive history. Yeah. And um, it was only when we started looking at starting a watch brand about five years ago that we undug all this history and, it, and it's led to a lot of the designs that you see before you today. So it's a perfect marriage because the whole place is quintessentially British. A hundred percent. The boathouse used to be run by a panelling expert called George Gray. And just before the Second World War, he, he worked on Malcolm Campbell's Bluebird up at Brooklands. Uh, he did a lot of the bodywork. And then when war broke out, he came down to Emsworth, this small village, and set up a shadow factory after the Spitfire factory in Southampton got bombed. And uh, he did a lot of the panelling in here for fuselages of Spitfires. And when the war finished, a lot of the single-seater sports cars came out of kind of the garages to be dusted down and they were all refitted back here and one of them was the van wall bodywork which was the single seater sports car that ended up winning the constructors championship in 1958 so there's lots of old photos that we've managed to uncover speaking to lots of locals about the history of this fantastic boathouse mm. so 
it's an incredible environment to work in. We're just overlooking the water, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a fantastically creative. See, I think, like myself, you seem a big admirer of history, and certainly someone that respects it and likes to pay tribute to it. Tell us a little bit more about your brand. For those that didn't see the first video or not perhaps so familiar with yourself, tell us a little bit about your brand and how it started. Well, uh, about five years ago, uh, my now business partner Graham Collins, who's an ex Black Ops military engineer, contacted me. He's always been into watches as we both have mm. and he sent me the idea for a design of a watch and uh, basically over a weekend I just designed a dial and sent it back to him and and we got talking we both got a fantastic interest in watches and history British history especially yeah, yeah. and we we thought yeah I think we've got the collective skills to bring together our take on a British heritage brand that was steeped in history but doing an awful amount of research into each individual model to give it the interest to consumers mm -hmm. and, and be true to the watches themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that's born through with when you look at the individual dials and the styling, um, I think it, sh it shows through. How so, many watches do you have in your range at the moment? We've currently got 12 in the range yeah. and each of our watches have a latitude and longitude coordinate on them and a date code. And, and when you cross reference both of those, they take you to a moment in history. Yeah. And that was born from the brand name Zero West, which is a, uh, the main uh, coordinate that runs through Greenwich, it's the prime meridian. So effectively, all our watches pinpoint moments in history. We research them and then we bring the styling from that moment. They're different into the moments world. in history. Absolutely, they? different okay. moments and yeah. they're all, all engineering. So for instance, we do a, a, a bull's head chronograph, which I believe is the only British bull's head chronograph. And that one's based on the 1927 land speed record that took uh, place on Daytona Beach in 1927. And George Gray that had this wonderful building work, yeah. worked on worked on that car That's as amazing, well yeah, yeah and, and before it went to beauty which it is now it came back to emsworth to be restored by the team his 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 team so i'm pleased to say that since i last met you you seem to have grown a lot the interest yeah. in the watches i know our people ask me about your watches a lot and your brand seems to have been how can i put it it's more recognized yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, we spend a lot of time developing the brand yeah. and, and the interest that we get is uh, global now, mm. uh, especially in the last six months. We seem to be selling watches to all four corners of the earth and um, yeah, it's, it's been great. What about support from our fellow Brits? What's that been? Oh, like? it's been great. I mean, they're the most passionate and, yeah. and the, uh, the most interested and the questions that we get are yeah. Yeah. Uh, very varied and, and, and exciting to answer because it means that you know, it never surprises me every letter that yeah, they, yeah. they've read on the website and um, it, it's enjoy, enjoyable. And the other thing is a lot of the watches that we sell, we, we can post up, up to our clients. Naturally, that's our business. Yeah. But a lot of them want to come here to collect them yeah. uh, to the boat. I we don't blame to, them after yeah, being here. I yeah. probably want to stay. Yeah, we we'll have trouble <laughs> getting rid of you. You come down on a beautiful day. That's yeah, stunning, lovely, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what your company reminds me of? It reminds me of a time when people had time to produce something with love care and attention it's almost like a victorian company well it, it's it's interesting you should say that because when we with all our watches it's not about it's never been about a price point or rushing it out the door yeah. it's it's about getting it right and it's about getting it right because the joy and the the satisfaction of having something mm. beautiful mm. on your wrist mm. especially that it's historically linked mm. is, is is in our brand's dna and it's really important and that's testament to Gray and my business partners just persistence with pursuing a story yeah. and finding every, you know, no stone unturned in terms of all the detail. Right down to the fact that we work with a, an historical illustrator who basically re-rendered the, the crash Spitfire, uh, which, which formed part of our marking material. And, it, and the, the accuracy that he, that he in himself went to on behalf of our, us as our brand was uh, just part of what we're, what we're about really. What about the other watches in your range? Tell us something a little bit about some of those. Anything in particular that you'd, uh, that stands out we should talk about? Yeah, well, the Cafe Racer, which we've got here, that's been very popular. Um, basically, the latitude and longitude of this watch, the coordinates go to the Ace Cafe in London. And um, whilst a lot of motorcycle people love this, a lot of motor, uh, motorsport people love this watch too, and it's got a, a fantastic custom rotor on the back. With a, This runs on a Valger movement, a 7750. Yeah. And all, I'm, what I must also remind those that haven't seen us before is the straps are all handmade by Graham. Uh, it was a laborious, uh, it took him about a year to perfect, but they are beautiful handcrafted straps. And I can't tell you as a brand how important that was for us. Uh, we look for an aftermarket strap 
uh, but we just couldn't find one that matched the engineering of yeah. our, our bodywork, which is all machined in the UK. Yeah. That, that was really important to stress. How, how have you found breaking into other countries, the markets? So I'm particularly interested in the United States because I think that... Uh, I think that your watches have a big future across the pond there. Uh, it's the fastest growing market for us mm. outside of the UK. Be, yeah. Really, yeah. really popular. Australia too, but particularly the States. Yeah. And um, they love the history aspect of it and, the, and the, the quality. I think it's very difficult. We're an internet brand and a lot of people ask us, currently an internet only brand, and a lot of people ask us about... Um, you know where they can see one of our watches yeah. but you know all our watches um you know if you send it and it's it's not for you but you know it's full refund no questions asked that's never happened to us yet yeah. so uh well, that was my know. next question is you know obviously a lot of people are gonna have you know they're gonna show these people your watches etc they're gonna maybe want to see one i mean yeah. how how would someone go about that because that's got to be holding you back to some degree isn't it it is a little bit i mean especially in the current situation yeah. um you know we, we are a lot of people engage with us and then this question comes up yeah. uh, and we try and you know we answer our emails at 10 o'clock on a saturday night mm. you know getting hold of us isn't difficult yeah. so it's we try and you know we want them to be happy and therefore anything that we send out that they are not happy with we will completely take back no questions asked for refund and that has never happened and we get emails one after the other from customers saying it, it, it's much better the pictures don't do it justice yeah. it, it looks so much better in the flesh and there's a there's a you're happy about that and you're also slightly frustrated because you feel more people need to see these watches yeah, yeah. but uh, you know with the way shows are at the moment the one thing is, I will yeah. say guys honestly I can say this from the bottom of my heart the one thing the overriding factor for me with these watches is the quality of the fit and the finish um, and the sheer value for money the, yeah. the way they're built, yeah. the way they're put together, the way they're finished is incredible. When you look, I mean, I was looking at your prices just to refresh my memory yeah, yeah. before I came along today, and frankly, they for what you you know for what you're getting for your money, it's incredible. Yeah, I, uh, that comes up time yeah. and time again. Uh, but currently, that was a price point that we yeah. that we wanted to. It didn't. It didn't reflect the amount of effort. Can it stay <laughs> like that? That's the well, question. <laughs> we'll 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 see moving forward. But uh, right now, that's that's what they that, they are. That's the, that's the overriding factor for me is is value for money. When I look at the watches, the fit and the finish is absolutely incredible. And uh, anyone that uh, you know, I think picks one of these up will 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 say the same thing. A question that is on my mind: Do yep. you ever see your brand maybe branching out into shops, retail stores? Because I know. There's a lot of people that are interested in your watches. Uh, How are you going to do? Never it? say, never say, yeah. never say never. I think we would cherry pick or choose those yeah, that would support carefully. us properly. Yeah. I mean, we also know that we we couldn't have any discounting because that would be detrimental to the brand. Yeah. And we have really honed this brand down. You know, it's so much so that that, that we want to control in the nicest possible way mm. how that's how that's seen and, and service to the clients. Because customer service for us is, is key. key. It's yeah, key, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, always key, always key. That's one of the things that I liked about your, your company right from the very start was your interaction between yourself and, and your, your followers, your customers. Well, I'll give you a good example. We had a gentleman that uh, called us. It was about five o'clock and he was going on a Friday and he was going on holiday on Saturday. And he lives about an hour away and he broke, he'd snagged the buckle. Yeah. And he said, can you get one in the post? And I said, I'm just not going to get it in the post in time. He said, ah, oh, I just really wanted to take my watch on holiday. I drove up there. And I was driving up there thinking, what just to doing? swap, why am I doing this? <laughs> to swap over a buckle. But he so wanted to take his new watch. Yeah. He'd only had a month yeah. on holiday. Yeah. It had to be, and he was over the moon. And it's just, when you can, you do what you can, even if it's something as trivial as change. Well, felt trivial, not to him. It was really, it really, not, I don't mean it was trivial, but you know, yeah, it was saying, really important yeah, to him. He yeah. loved it. And I know what that would be like, yeah. because if I have something that I love and, you know, I'm going away or you want, to take, you want to take it with you, of course. I remember when we met a year ago, I said to you at the time that I could see your brand going a long yeah. way. Um, and I think to be fair, what I've seen today, you've moved forward faster than even I thought you would. Um, where do you see the future going? Because this could get very big. It's interesting because we, we use a strap line now where we are a boutique British watch brand. We're not really very keen at all on the, this micro brand mm -hmm. tag. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we use that is because the quality of what we're offering 
and the service that we're offering is that of a boutique, individual, yeah. rare yeah. watch brand that has a high quality, but is a, a good price. And mm. that's predominantly because we're internet based. Oh, and it's really important for us to keep that, even if we grow larger. And I think the importance for us is to rejuvenate the brand. And as I've said all the way along, the range will remain relatively tight. And then when, when a model sells out, no matter how popular it was, it will be replaced with something, with something else. else. At the end of the day, myself and Graham are designers. Um, Graham's got loads of ideas for new watches, some of which I'd love to talk about. And we're just, they will come. Yeah. They will come. They're in his head. They're, they're out of his head. They're, in, they're, on, they're on the computer. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, it, it's exciting. The future. So how many of these watches are you producing of each model? Well, I mean, for an example, yep. um, what's a typical run? A typical run uh, on many of the watches that you see here, only 100. 100 pieces. Yeah, worldwide. 100 pieces worldwide. Yeah, absolutely worldwide. And for instance, the S4 that you're wearing on your wrist, yeah. um, we're only making 80 of those. Wow. Uh, that's only been out just over a month, uh, maybe eight weeks. I mean, that's particularly impressive. Uh, we were doing some macro photography before we started filming the interview and guys honestly if, if there are any faults on a watch believe me macro photography shows it up and it shows it up badly but the, the, um, again i've got to say without repeating myself the finish on these watches is is first first rate well i think uh, you know especially with graham with his engineering background the the body work uh, that's machined in the uk is first class yeah. uh, it proves it can be done and i just think that um when you've got that's what you've grown up yeah. with it, it for us it wasn't about making a phone call to europe or wherever and yeah. and getting a badged watch in that, that's not what we're yeah. about and all our watches are uh, are built by a rolex accredited watch repairer um you know the the attention to detail we go to on every front is so is, each watch is put together by hand by hand yeah. absolutely by hand yeah. and tested yeah. and then we we have a quality control there and we have a quality control when they come back from the workshop here and everything's reassembled and and every part is made somewhere different and the, and they come to us so yeah that was uh, going to be my next question because a lot of people that perhaps didn't see our first interview are going to ask you about movements they're going to say paul what what can you tell us about what's inside the engines in these yep. watches tell us a little bit about yeah that. i mean uh, all the watches run on eta movements uh the non the chronographs are 7750 valgers and the rest are 28 24 movements uh, we've been very lucky we've got strong links to a good source in Switzerland uh, you know there's been a lot of talk with ETA about what's happening with them with the Swatch group mm -hmm. uh, and we've stood fast with ETA and, and we don't see in terms of uh, parts or movements yeah. uh, of course we can't order direct from ETA you have to be yeah. a, a massive player for that but um, yeah, everything seems to be working fine and our supply chains are, are, are very good. So guys, I've got to tell you, I've saved the very best bit till last. Andrew, tell us a little bit more about this Merlin Rolls-Royce engine that was engine. built around the corner from yeah. us at Rolls-Royce. Okay, so we were very lucky to acquire a part of a crashed Spitfire Merlin engine. And the story of this is quite amazing. So... We've always wanted to produce uh, a new Spitfire watch after the S1 and we've got this new watch out called the S4 which is based on an airspeed indicator from a Spitfire. We've got the dial here. I'm sure Paul will show you, show screen, you have that yeah. up on screen. Um, it's very difficult to get hold of Merlin Spitfire, genuine Merlin Spitfire parts through accredited sources. And uh, we have been uh, extensively researching, trying to find the right piece of Merlin engine that we could melt down to form the back of this new S4 watch. And we, we were lucky, we struck gold, and we found uh, through one of our resources, uh, part of Merlin engine casing from a Spitfire P9427 that crashed in Pool Bay in 1940. And this was a Spitfire, a Battle of Britain Spitfire, that was built in Southampton uh, at the Spitfire factory there before it got bombed. And when this was dug up from Pool Bay, it was actually dredged up by a fishing boat in the 80s, it was inconclusive which Spitfire it was from. And when we got hold of this, we uh, normally there is, a, there is a plate or some signs that will give it away, but it, was, it, was, it had been bedded in the salt and it had rusted in, in the seabed really badly. So we enlisted the help of a local historian and that's when our research really took hold. I mean, Graham, my business partner, is a massive uh, Spitfire historian, he's a massive Spitfire nut. And so it took about a year to put together this story and we had to research RAF records. And also that was found with the Merlin engine was the propeller blade. And it was a certain length and shape. 
and it was deducted that this was a Mark I Spitfire. And so after researching a lot of the RAF sorties and missing in actions, it was deduced that this was the only Spitfire that, would, that had gone down after a dogfight uh, in that area. And it belonged to a pilot called Ziggy Klein, a Polish pilot. So we did even more research to find out about this pilot and, it, and we actually found out that on that day, that dogfight, he actually, before he was gunned down, he'd actually shot down a very famous uh, German pilot called um, Helmut Wick, who only a few weeks earlier had been decorated by Hitler as a fantastic flying ace. So the Polish pilot had shot down the German pilot yep. and then later in... It, within the dogfight. Within the dogfight, he ended up being yep. killed himself in action. Well, missing, yes, missing, missing in action. action. And this is the remnants of it. Yeah, for his Absolutely Spitfire. amazing story. Oh, we, we've even gone to the details of 3D rendering the plane with the, all the original markings. We use a historical illustrator and that's just part of the marketing material that we put together. So then what we did was we melted this uh, Merlin engine casing down at a local custom motorcycle company. And uh, they uh, took that and they melted it down into these rods. And then we machined these off and created discs, which we laser engraved, which are then under sapphire glass, which go in the back of our S4 watches. Yeah. The new S4 and the S4 Blackout, which is in this disc here, which was pretty difficult to engrave. But it, it's a fantastic story that what a piece it's of just history. part of our, yeah, part of our wrist, brand. A piece of that history yeah. on your wrist, an yeah. actual piece of missing in action Spitfire. Yeah, actually, if you go to our, web, our website, zerowest.watch, there's a fantastic article showing all about the story of the pilot and how we acquired the parts and the whole process of melting it down for our watches. So it really is, as they say, history on the wrist. So I guess the big question is, Andrew, where do you see Zero West as a company in, say, five years' time? Uh, I'd like to see us established on a global scale in terms of a viable alternative in many people's minds as to a, uh, an Omega or a Rolex and a strong British brand. I mean, at the moment, when you, when you think of British brands, you're thinking of Bremont or you're thinking of Christopher Ward, and we definitely want to be up there with them as a viable alternative, but still as a petite brand, as in, you know, low volume, uh, change, ever, changing, yeah. ever changing range that keeps it interesting. And also, you know, we're part of We've got ideas in how we're going to shape our brand that is very different to the other brands out there. And, and I think if people keep following us over the next year or two, they're, they're going to see where those plans are going. Mm. And uh, there is definitely, a, whilst there are many similarities between what we're doing and other brands, there is a lot that's unique about our brand and the ethos of what we're trying to do. Um, and I think it's going to be an exciting few years coming up for us. I think you're right. I think the one thing that uh, strikes me is that Graham and yourself, uh, I always see this as being your baby. I don't ever see you letting this get out um, of control. No, uh, uh, no, we're very much uh, yeah. too invested, some yeah, might say, yeah. but emotionally that's what, invested. Emotionally yeah, invested yeah, yeah, uh, but that's what makes the brand what it is. Yeah. And um, that's what makes all the... The passion, your, your passion yeah. for your watches is clear for everyone to see. And I think everyone, you know, even if the watches are perhaps not your cup of tea, everyone's going to appreciate the passion, the effort, the history that's gone into these watches. Yeah, and I think that um, when customers spend time with us and we get to explain all those little bits that we've spent lots of time developing, um, it's important that they feel that the choice they make is right for them. And, you know. and uh, if someone wants to come along and maybe see one or two pieces, what's absolutely, the, yeah, absolutely. We've uh, it's a lovely day out, guys. I'll tell you that. Oh, it's fantastic. We're down yeah. on the seafront, there's beautiful restaurants here, uh, and there's great walks, and it's a beautiful spot to come and sit and just chat about the brand. We're yeah. just happy to meet people, yeah, watch people, and um, just chat about what, what we've done, show them the models, how we design stuff talk about the st how we construct the straps and, and the history. There's so much here in the studio yeah. to actually see and talk about, so it, it's a great The day first out. thing that I saw when I drove into the town was this monument said, welcome to Emsworth with a couple of Union Jacks hanging from it. It's a, as I say, a quintessentially British town, fit for a quintessentially British brand. Um, yeah. I wish yeah. you, honestly, mate, I said it this time last year, um, I wish you all the best and uh, I look forward to coming back again this time next year, maybe. Absolutely. And uh, see, how much fur see how much further you've moved on. Thanks so much for, you know, for joining me. And um, on behalf of the viewers as well, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Squadron leader, target spotted at zero degrees west.